So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. Pretty nice day today here in Pennsylvania. Now yesterday was a different story. We had some serious rain yesterday. Uh, probably three or four rounds of pretty heavy thunderstorms. Had some flash flooding, which is why I had to take care of the driveway there. It got washed out pretty good. But before I forget, I wanted to mention it's coming right up August 19th and 20th. Melissa and I will be in Boonville, New York at the New York Woodsman Field Days. Now on Friday the 19th, we'll be at the Steel Booth from 10 to noon and from 2 to 4. And on Saturday, we will be at the Woodmiser booth from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. So if you'd like to stop and say hi, it's a good show, and uh, we enjoy going there. They haven't had it the last two years, but they're finally bringing it back. Now, in October, we will be at the Paul Bunyan show again, of course. That's a great show as well. And that's a great time of year. You go to that Paul Bunyan show in October, and you're there. You're meeting a bunch of people, seeing a bunch of cool stuff. And then you get to the point where, like, you just want to go home and cut wood. Just everything going on there puts you in the mood for wood cutting season. But anyway, for you guys up in New York State or the surrounding area, Boonville, 19th, 20th, um, listen, I'll be there. I'll mention it a few more times in a couple videos coming up before then. So this afternoon, I'm kind of uh, preparing for the week ahead. I have a few little projects lined up out in the woods and down at the brick house. It's just a little too wet right now, but I'm going to get prepared for next week. And I also want to talk about being prepared for the coming weeks, coming months, and coming years. This is that uh, hose holder that I got a couple weeks ago. Keeps your hoses from rubbing up against your tracks. The only time they're really close to the tracks is when the boom and the grapple is uh, all the way down, but that definitely helps. It is a hot one. It's a hot hat day. Hot hat day. Yeah. You know, I just humidity. put the uh, grapple on the skid loader. I mentioned them earlier. I'm kind of preparing for the week. Uh, later this week, I want to take this out by the mini cabin okay. when it dries up. All those big piles of brush out there. Yeah. I want to kind of collect all that, get it somewhere where I can burn, and then take this down to the brick house. Okay. Remember where I took all those big Norway spruce down? Oh, yeah. They're still all down at the bottom of the yard. And you know what? Those things, they like, uh, they break down pretty quick. Remember I piled that stuff up down there. There must have been five or six big Norway spruce. 
and I piled them all up with a rented excavator, and that was like two and a half years ago, yeah. maybe. And the pile is like 20 feet lower, but it's still at the bottom of the lawn. And uh, this is supposed to be the dry season, which it has been, but it's been pretty rainy lately. But before fall, I'd like to get all that cleaned up. And I have some logs out in the woods, which is why the grapple's on. And while the grapple is on, I brought up this roll of Gia textile here. So we came back from uh, West Virginia yesterday afternoon, and I'll be taking the BX back down this week someday i have a rented excavator coming down there but i have probably 275 or 300 feet of this gia textile we're going to use it on the driveway down there so i got it on here be all ready to go i also need to get some chainsaws ready in that job box that i have oh, and uh, right. and prepare for that yeah where's your shoes eva so Eva just woke up from a nap. She worked the long shift at the uh, cookie store there, didn't you? Yep. Cookie store. <laughs> Who opens the cookie shop? You were there at like 7.30 this morning, weren't you? Yeah. Got your uh, Plumber Jim's sweatshirt on. That's one of your favorites, isn't I it? I do love it. How many hours do you get in a week now? Next week I work five hours. You're like at 25 hours. I talked hour. to the manager and I was like, you need to schedule me more next week. And he's like, okay. Mm -hmm. But today was his last day, so I don't oh, think that's yeah. going to happen. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, and you have school coming up, so. Yeah. When's that start? The 23rd. Coming right up. And you're working for us. We keep you pretty busy. Yep. I've been babysitting, so. Have you been doing any school shopping? Nope. Not yet. <laughs> so, not only are we uh, preparing for the week ahead, I've been thinking a lot lately. Uh, Melissa and I both have been, our family, have been kind of, I don't know what you call us, closet preppers. I mean, we're not into it. Just you know, full blown, but we are prepared for a lot of different uh, scenarios and things. We've always had food storage and, you know, things like generators and I don't know. I always prepare and plan. You know, I watch fuel prices when we're going to fill the oil tank at the house and just all different things. And I, I try to stay on top of things and prepare for the unknown. But a lot of times we have kind of an idea where things are going right now i don't have any idea where things are going you know what i mean i it don't a big question things yeah. are really strange uh right now uh i'm not sure what's going to happen and i just wanted to put this video out there what are you guys preparing for uh there's a lot of different scenarios that i see none of them are any good uh, i kept thinking the value of our dollar was going to drop which which it has in one way because we have inflation, but compared to the rest of the world, the dollar is strong right now. That doesn't make any sense to me. And we just keep printing more money. I, I don't understand what's going on now. Not like us. Like the yeah, country. if we could print money, it'd be a whole different story around here. Let me tell you that. But it's just, it's weird out there. It really is. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't really know what to prepare, prepare for other than to keep doing what we're doing. Right. You know, and uh, short term, long term. But my opinion is something has to give eventually. I mean, we are thirty trillion dollars in debt, and they're and they are you know preparing to spend another seven hundred and some billion dollars. But call it the Inflation Reduction Act, which makes no sense to me at all because that's one of the main reasons we're in yeah. the spot we're in. Now, some things I do think are going to come down in price, like lumber, for example. And the only reason that is is because the housing is slowing down quite a bit. And I think over the next few months, it's going to drop a bunch more. I have been talking to some supply yards and things around here. And, you know, they work with all the big builders in the area. And, and things are definitely slowing down. And for our area where we live, uh, that's saying something. It has been wow. busy around here literally for decades. I mean, with minor slowdowns here and there, but I think the housing thing is going to really slow down, uh, especially with rising interest rates. And uh, I don't know, though. If you have any idea what we should be preparing for, please let me know in the comments. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on all over the world that aren't good either. But I think our biggest risk is uh, is ourselves and, and the economy. I do. And the dollar. Uh, but I think you're wise in saying, let's just keep doing what we're doing. You know, we want to prepare physically, mentally, spiritually. And I think we've been doing that as a family. And mm -hmm. uh, it keeps us busy. But yeah, it is good to ask all of you, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you guys doing? And, and one of the reasons, we didn't get into this too much, but uh, 
one of the reasons we bought the property in West Virginia, uh, we just thought land was a good investment. Not only did we want a nice place to have a camp, but something that, you know, we could leave to the kids one day uh, that will hold its value. You know, real estate will go up and down, but I think overall it's a pretty safe bet. And uh, that's one of the reasons. And the value of all those trees down there, you know, yeah. we, we've got a sawmill and we have that LT50 sawmill coming. I mean, if it comes down to it, there's enough wood on that property. I can't even imagine how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of board feet. I don't even know what's there, but it's crazy amounts of lumber down there. But that's one another reason. It's all part of the whole plan. We don't share everything with you guys. Right. You know, but uh, we've always been kind of preppers. I mean, I'm not out there running around with stickers all over my truck or anything like that. But I like being prepared. I like to try to figure out what's going to happen in the future and over the years i've actually been pretty good my timing's been off on things but i could tell pretty easily when we're going into a downturn or when things are going to pick up but uh this time's different nothing's making sense to me it's right. it's not everything's out of whack you know so once again if you guys have any idea uh or let us know what you're preparing for we're just going to keep doing what we're doing uh, i don't know what else you can do i really don't you have any ideas, Melissa? Well, we have each other. We can ask we, you guys. You can let us know in the comments. Yeah. And then um, we can move in the direction we need to move by sharing what we know with you and, and vice versa. The other thing, you can't freak out either. You know, life has to go on. I, I was never one of those guys, you know, the Y2K thing. I actually wondered about that, like what was going to happen. I was prepared for things, but it wasn't like I was digging a bunker uh, back in the woods to hide in or anything like that life has to go on you got to keep doing what you do every day but and you, you got to be excited when you wake up you've got to be excited about life and 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 your goals you know you can't wake up and be fearful you can't wake up and be anxious right or afraid to try you know what yeah you find what you're excited about and do that. i was laughing this morning you say well, we we both got up pretty early and then uh it was a rough morning this morning. It was Hunter had a seizure this morning. He hasn't had one for what six months? I would say five. Yeah, five, five months, months probably. And he had one this morning. Uh, luckily, we were we were there. I was right there. It was in a bar stool, and we were able to kind of lay him down. And uh, it wasn't as violent as some of his seizures have been. But it just wipes him out, and uh, it wipes us out too. I don't know why. It does. So Hunter laid down. He was all good, and uh, I just laid down on the couch for a little bit. Melissa laid back down, and uh, I'm sitting there, and I get a notification on my phone. We have that Simply Safe system, and someone was in the building, and because I have a, oh. I have a camera in the building, I'm like, what the heck? Who's in the building? You know, nobody's here. So I pulled up. There's Melissa over there rummaging around for something in the building. She snuck out on me. I didn't know there she was napkins. From the party yeah, that I put underneath, yeah. and I needed to get them because we ran out of them. But it was after that thing with Hunter, we both kind of just went back to sleep for a little bit, and it was a whole thing. But he's doing good now, and uh, man, he bounces back quick from those. Like he, incredible. They're, they're, I guess they're just extremely draining. I mean, he just sleeps, but he was asleep for what an hour and a half. I would say two hours. Yeah, two hours, two hours hour and, and he just came charging out of his bedroom after two hours to take on the day just like it was any other day just it's crazy and i check his mouth because he bites his tongue yeah his tongue on the one side is a little red but it doesn't look like it was bloody yeah so we're gonna keep our eye on that they seem hopefully this is a one and done for a while but uh we'll see what happens hmm but anyway uh before i wrap this video up there's a couple other things i have to do number one let us know in the comments what you guys are preparing for right i want to know i'm number I'm two gonna you're gonna seat. you're gonna laugh at me but i have been using that foam cannon on absolutely everything and next up i'm gonna wash the jeep i'm addicted to that thing uh i showed it in two different videos i was one of those guys that never had one you see people use them never thought much of them i absolutely love it i put an amazon link and people from the first video are commenting how they got them and, oh. and love them Somebody tagged us in a Facebook video today of him oh, washing his tractor with cool. with one, but uh, they are a game changer. I'll show you the Jeep here in a minute, and uh, it's not completely filthy, but there's, I don't know, where does Eva run that thing? You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, we'll clean it up. It'll literally take 10 minutes. It'll be washed, and uh, I'll, this one I'll blow off with the uh, leaf blower when I'm done. Shouldn't be any streaks or anything like that, but as you can see, the skid loader's clean, 
MX5400 excavator. I've been washing everything when I have time. It's like, I'd have to bring it inside. Yeah, the, on the inside, like on my desk. I wonder if I could use it on my desk. Hmm. Oh, we do have a clean fridge. I cleaned out our refrigerator and it's been clean. Yeah, expecting Just that new one that never showed up. Fridge, yeah. It's a whole nother story. But anyway, let's wash up the Jeep here real quick. So Melissa just, just told me I screwed up. We just did that on the wrong side. I'm always on the right side. You're on the left side. I'm not on the left side. I stood here realizing we're on the wrong side. But I didn't want to interrupt We do you. always stand that way on the other side. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, my right side, I think, is my better side. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> hey, before we wash the Jeep, I want to ask you something about the driveway. What? Well, I was running the camera for you while you're um, backblading it. Land plane. Or land plane. <laughs> I did do some backblading. Go, okay. But go on. What's so your question? When people pull in, like, you know, FedEx delivery, um, maybe a friend, someone that are, like, not familiar, they're like, wait, is this their, their address? So they pull in, oh, yeah, this is it. I'm right. So they kind of come in and stop. And then when they go, they're always spinning up some stone. Mm -hmm. That bottom part is just so soft. I know because I live here, when I pull in, just give it gas. Go. Yeah, it stays loose for that reason that you said. And also, like after that heavy rain right there, yeah. a lot of the finer stuff from up top washes down there to the bottom. How would you fix that? Well, that's what I try to do. I pull that back up oh. where it belongs. Okay. And if, if you'd buy me like a big roller for Christmas or something, yeah, we could no. make that problem go away forever. Oh, I think we both know the answer to that, but. So what do you think of that? So far, so fun. I was all ready to uh, do it. She's like, here, let me try it. So I'll have to wash something else. <laughs> I'm gonna, plenty of stuff to wash. We're just going to wait a minute or two. We'll take the uh, okay. foam cannon off okay. and uh, put the tip back on. All right. See what it does. So we're not going to dry it off because Eva's going to leave in it right now, but it does a great job. And one thing that's really nice uh, about the foam cannon with the Jeep or like a tractor or some equipment, these are very hard to hand wash because there's so many different angles and nooks and crannies on this. But uh, yeah, it works really good. It does. Great. What do you think, Eva? Looks really good. You can start using that. Usually Eva it keeps it... Fun. Yeah, she keeps it pretty clean, but uh, I'll get you hooked up with the foam cannon. It gets dirty fast. It does. The get... inside and outside. Where, Where are you driving? I clean out the inside the next day. It's a mess again. Well, one thing, too, these tires, it just, even when it rains, you're throwing stuff all over it all the time. Yeah. Yep. But don't forget, I'll put a link in the description for the foam cannon. I want everyone to get one. Yep. I want to see more videos that people keep sending in. That's pretty cool. Cool oh, thanks for cleaning it. All right. I like it looking dirty though. I like the splashed up mud on the side. The intimidation of, uh, <laughs> hey, I've been off roading. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. See ya. Goodbye. Be careful. Talking about being prepared. You want to be prepared with your Outdoors with the Morgans gear. Here's our uh, USA flag, Faith, Family, Freedom, Outdoors with the Morgans shirt. This That's is what it's going to take to get through this. That's Faith, right. Family, and Freedom. For sure. We really, this one's just a simple outdoors with the Morgans with the uh, YouTube logo. And you want to be prepared for hunting season. 
get your hat. We have this and the blaze orange with the camo um, lid bill and then the leather patch. But we have a couple more in the hunting blaze orange. So Yeah, you know, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll put a link in the description for that. Thanks. And also, I'm going to throw that foam cannon in there. My goal is for everyone that has never tried one to try it because they're going to love it like I did. It's a foam cannon. How Sometimes cool is it? People hear phone instead of foam. Yeah, foam so cannon. Foam, like soap suds. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.